welcome to another episode of the Rotate Cup Expert. Today we're going to talk about part three in our series about nutrition after surgery. Part one and part two is leading up to some more details. Um, so the key thing about when we talk about diet after and nutrition after rotator cuff repair or any shoulder surgery, any, maybe any shoulder, any surgery at all, we want to think about diet and lots of different components. So first of all, you have, what are you eating, right? So eating comes down to carbs, protein, fat, and then we talk about other kind of other minor nutrients like fiber and vitamins and minerals and of course water. So today we're going to talk about kind of the ratios we would expect to, to try to get into our bodies after surgery um, of the carbs, fats, and proteins. Um, there are a few different standards or a few different kind of um, ideals of what we would want to get in. Before I go into those specific things, the key thing is after surgery, you have high demand for nutrients. You have a high stress situation, right? Something just happened. The injury and then now the surgery. The surgery is going to require your body to mount a response, a healing response. We need to heal the muscles, the bones, the tendons. And so the body needs more nutrients than normal. So typically what we talk about is we look at nutrition is broken into our diet, right? The carbs, the proteins, the fats. So simply put in general, now this is not true for everybody, so it depends on exactly where you're starting from. If you're a very thin person, you probably need to go a little bit more. If you're a very overweight person, you probably need to go a little bit less, but generally 15 calories per pound. So that's over 2000 calories for a 165 pound male or female for that matter. Um, so we want to say that is a general beginning, right? Okay. And then we'll take out this. We look at proteins. Proteins are important to healing. So we look at proteins. We look at now, unfortunately, we had to switch it to kilograms, right? 2.2 pounds a kilogram. So we look at kilograms and how many grams of protein. So if we break this out, so we get how many grams of protein we need, and then we convert that into the calories and we take that away. So that would lead us with what's left. We want to fill up with carbs and fats. In general, we want carbs to be about 50 to 60%. Now, if you're a diabetic, we have to be careful with the amount of carbs. We have to probably select the proper carbs, All right? So carbs, healthy carbs, we talk about grains and fruits and vegetables. Those are the kind of things where we're gonna get the good carbs from. Obviously, we have to be careful with any sugary stuff, um, low quality grains, so like pure white bread, that kind of stuff. We wanna avoid those or minimize those and fill up with healthy carbs. And then fats, we want also same thing, we wanna fill up with healthy fats. Now, 5% to 10% of your body is not that much, but we do need to make sure we get enough fat. Most of the time in the American diet, we don't have to worry about that. Whatever we're gonna eat is gonna have enough fat to cover that. Well, typically, unless you have a very strict diet, um, you're very strict vegetarian, you may not be able to get enough fats. So if that's the case and you wanna think about um, olive oil and uh, avocados have good healthy fats. But again, most of us, including myself, most of us don't have to worry about getting enough fat just because inherently in the, in the, in the food that we eat, we're gonna get enough. Now, last thing with Proteins, proteins, obviously the big protein come from meat, right? Fish, eggs, um, chicken, whatever. We want to have high quality protein. Now, if you are a, um, a vegan or vegetarian, we have to modify that a little bit. Obviously beans are really good. Legumes are good for, for, um, for protein. If you're not, if you're trying to avoid animal products, um, tofu is good, soy, right? So those are the kind of things we want to look at as far as when we talk about protein. In the next episode, we're going to talk about vitamins and minerals, what are important, what maybe are not important. Uh, but in general, we would want to take having somebody take vi multivitamin in, in addition to this healthy diet. And then we want to make sure water, water is super important, right? So we talk about carbs, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals, water, and fiber. Fiber will come in most of the time in the carbs. So if you really have a high protein diet, you're not gonna have a lot of fiber. So we, so sometimes we have to assist our, our system, meaning assist our diet. So sometimes we can't get enough um, fiber through our diet. And if that's the case, um, then we wanna supplement it with some kind of fiber supplement. Obviously, when we look at carbs, we look at leafy vegetables, most vegetables have pretty good uh, fiber content, so we wanna work on that. That's gonna help us flush the uh, the bad stuff, the, the debris out of our system. So it's important, especially when we're working on early after surgery, we really wanna flush 
the, the medicines, the drugs we're getting to flush them out. We're gonna flush out the anesthesia out. So important, water and fiber. Those are the two vehicles that really flush the system out. So we wanna make sure we get enough of that. If we're not getting enough fiber, then there are fiber tablets. In my experience, fiber tablets have a hard time being broken down by the body. So a lot of times those fiber pills start as a pill when they go in and they end coming out as a pill. So I'm not a really big fan of fiber tablets. Although if that's the only thing you have available, then certainly it's better than nothing. I am a fan of a kind of uh, um, the powder. So specifically, I like Citrusel. Citrusel has um, a good fiber content and doesn't create gas like other fiber supplements may. So Citrusel, you know, glass in the morning, glass in the evening of the Citrusel will keep you regular, which is important when we're taking our, our narcotics. Uh, and if we're kind of slow and not moving a lot, our gut doesn't move a lot too. So we want to make sure we're using that fiber to flush through. Uh, and so Citrusel is my go-to as far as what to take as a fiber supplement after surgery and even in day-to-day -day life. Lastly, after we look at these percentages, we look at the grams, we look at the calories, we can bring that all together into one nice package where we can make sure we're getting enough of the proper nutrients when we're recovering. Um, and never forget about water. The general idea of water is you probably need about two liters of water a day uh, to keep you, yourself hydrated. Now, some of that water does come from the food you eat that has water in it. And so that being said, I think it'd still be a good goal for all of us, especially after uh, after surgery to get about two liters of water. People who are bigger people probably need more. People who are smaller people probably need less. Um, but it's important to kind of get that general idea of two liters of water is probably a good idea after surgery and probably a good idea in life in general. All right, so I hope that helps. So we're gonna do one more session. We'll do nutrition part four. And that nutrition part four is gonna be about vitamins and minerals. So uh, stay tuned for that episode and we'll see you soon. Thanks.